So I'm going to cover several subjects today. They're all concerning idolatry. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about Christmas and um, what Jehovah the Father thinks of it. And um, I'm going to point out a Greek word today that is going to change a narrative that King James Version has pushed uh, concerning Christianity. But I'm going to go ahead and get started with Jeremiah 10, or Jeremiah is the way it's pronounced correctly. And I'm going to use um, Strong's Concordance. Uh, it's difficult to... Well, I'll just get started. Listen to the word which the Lord... Is that what it says? No, it does not. Jehovah says to you, O house of Israel. Jehovah says, learn not the way of the goey. Who are the goey? They are the Gentiles. Do not learn their way. Now, if you were to go to um, if you were to go to Romans 11, in it you will find that any Gentile who wants to be saved must be grafted in among and partaking with the branches of Israel. It says that. In fact, what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'll go back to Jeremiah 10, but I'm going to go ahead and go to Romans Romans 11. And prove that to you. The engrafting of the Gentiles. Engrafting where? Verse 17. And if some of the branches, the being of Israel, were broken off, <coughs> temporarily I might add, and you being a wild olive... Not a wild olive tree, but a wild olive, were grafted in among them, like a tiny little branch is grafted in. Among who? Among the other branches. And partaking jointly. Sunkoinos. Sunkoinos means partaking jointly, together with the branches of Israel, and of the root. Who is the root? The root is the Moshiach, and the fatness of the olive tree. Boast not against the branches, because if you boast, you bear not the root, but the root bears you. So that's proof that any Gentile, who wants to be saved must be grafted in among the branches of Israel. Now let's go back to where we were. That would be Jeremiah 10. Learn not the way of the Gentiles. So the Gentiles would have to drop their ways, be grafted into the branches of Israel, and reject their own and reject their old Gentile ways. And do not be dismayed at the signs of the zodiac. Do not be dismayed at the signs of the zodiac, for the Gentiles are dismayed at them. The customs of those people are vain. They're but a breath. They cut a tree out of the forest. Today, it's an evergreen tree. Back in those days, it might have been a palm tree. But it doesn't matter. It's the same tradition. Cut a tree out of the forest. The work of the hand of the workman with the axe. 
They adorn it with silver and with gold, and they fasten it with nails and with hammers that it doesn't move. They are upright, let's see what it says, palm tree, tomer. What is a tomer? Let's look. Palm tree. Okay. Back in those days, it was a palm tree. Today, it's an evergreen tree. But they don't speak, and they have to be carried, because they cannot go on their own. Do not be afraid of them, because they cannot do evil, neither can they do good. They're worthless. There is none like, or it just says, it does not say uh, here in King James, for as much as there is none like you, O Lord. It doesn't say that. It just says, Jehovah is great. Won't you listen carefully? And your name, your Shem, is great and mighty. But you see, the Gentiles, they, want, don't, they don't want to acknowledge the name of Jehovah. They love the name of their idols. They've never, they have not changed. Now, you are frightful, O king of nations, for in you does it pertain, for as much as among the wise men of the Gentiles and other kingdoms there is none like unto you. They are altogether brutish and foolish. <clears throat> the tree, the tree, the Christmas tree is a doctrine of vanity. Now, the word delusion is also used. Emptiness, delusion, fraud, futility, idolatry, vanity, worthless. So, these traditions of the tree is a doctrine of fraud, delusion, emptiness, idolatry, and vanity. That ought to be enough. I should be able to just fold up my laptop and call it a day. But I will continue. I think there, I, I, there is more down here. But I almost fear, I, I halfway fear continuing down in this chapter because those who are listening are going to forget about this word. Hey, Bill, and what it means. There. Uh, their doctrines, their, their trees, their ets, their trees. The doctrine of their trees is a doctrine of lies, fraud, deceit, delusion, and idolatry. That ought to be enough. Silver is beaten flat and brought from Tarshish. That would be the uh, Iberian Peninsula. And gold from Ufaz, the work of the workmen in the hands of the founder. That would be the uh, smelter. Blue and purple is their clothing and they are the work of cunning men. Jehovah is truth. He's the truth. He tells the truth. 
He is the true Elohim. There is no one else. He is the age long Elohim, the long duration king. At his wrath, the earth will quake, and the Gentiles shall not be able to contain his indignation. When? We'll continue. Thus you shall say unto them, The idols that have not made the heaven and the earth, even they will perish from the earth and from under these heavens. And he that made the earth by his power, he that established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the sky by his discretion, when he utters his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the rains and he uh, in the heavens, and he causes the let's say vapors. It uh, says captain here, but will continue to ascend from the um, north, south, east, and west from the earth, and he makes lightning with rain and brings forth the wind out of his treasures. Mankind is brutish in his knowledge. Every smelter is confounded by the graven image. For his graven image is deception. That includes that graven image that you Christians every Sunday bow down and worship as your Jesus Christ. That image is deception and falsehood. There is no breath in them. They are Hebel. They are what? They are delusion, emptiness, fraud, futility, idolatry, useless, vanity, worthless. That graven image of Jesus that you worship on Sunday is all of that. It's a fraud. Now, let's continue. They are frauds, the work of mockery, the works of mockery. The Gentiles, in the time of their visitation, they shall perish. The portion of Jacob, Yaakov, who formed and fashioned everything, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance, Jehovah Sabah is his name. Now, it was necessary for me to start here. Let's see if, what is this? Okay. Now, Christianity, mausoleum of the Julii Christ. Now, the so-called St. Peter's Basilica is actually the old temple of Jupiter. Many people do not know this. But you can do your research and find out for yourself. The earliest mosaic with Christian subjects known today was found in the mausoleum in the Julii under the St. Peter's Basilica in Rome and is dated at the end of the 3rd century. Like so much early Christian art, the mosaic at first appears to have a pagan subject. At first? Or maybe it actually appears to have a pagan subject. 
Let's continue. The vineyard of Bacchus and a charioteer from whose nimmed head stream beams of light like Helios crossing the sky in his chariot. All right? Now, if you'll see on the head of, looky here, Christ Helios. So Christ is actually Helios. Who is Helios? I will get to that in just a minute. But I want you to look at the beams of light coming off of his head. All right? The oldest extant Christian mosaics are those decorated in the mausoleum of Julii, a small building at the catacomb under... I just read this. <clears throat> Decoration covers a large section of the vault in which the chariot of the sun stands out in brilliant splendor against the twisting stems of a spreading vine trellis. This mosaic with its typically Hellenistic grace. And what did I tell you about the Hellenes? The Hellenized Jews were traitors like the capos of the Holocaust. I showed you this when I did my one of my last videos concerning the war between uh, Antiochus IV and the Maccabees. This war where the Maccabees defeated Antiochus IV and the celebration of Hanukkah began. The Hellenish Jews were traitors. So it is impossible for Hellenization to mix with the truth. And yet, here we have Hellenism. In the 3rd and 14th century of Christianity, as they say. Uh, may well date back to the end of the 3rd century. The earliest Christian vault wall mosaics so far discovered are in a small mausoleum far from the tomb, or not far from the tomb, of, as, they, as they claim, St. Peter on Vatican Hill, which is that actually of Jupiter. The mausoleum was built towards the end of the 2nd century for the Julii family, but the mosaics probably date from the middle 3rd century in the Subjects represented are a curious mixture, mixture of pagan and Christian symbolism. On the walls and ceiling of the tomb, the luxuriant vine of Dionysus has become the true vine of Christ. So you want to call yourself a Christian? Really? Really? You want to celebrate December the 25th, do you? The mosaic is known as the Christ Helios and illustrates the syncretism of Christianity with the pagan sun worship instituted on the winter solstice by Emperor Marcus Euralius at the end of the second century. One of these, the Christ Helios, is the earliest depiction of Jesus in a pose very similar to that of the Roman god Apollo. Christ as Sol Invictus, the invincible sun god. The earliest known mosaic of explicitly Christian content depicts Christ in the guise of a familiar pagan deity, Sol Invictus Helios, 
the sun god. Now, let's look at this list of All of these Messiah-like saviors who are crucified on a cross or a tree before ascending into heaven. Are you ready? Thilius of Egypt, 1700 BCE. Krishna of India, 1200 BCE. Uh, Krute of Chaldea, 1200 BCE. Atius uh, of Phrygia. 1170 BCE, Tammuz of Syria, 1160 BCE, Jesus, or Jesus, 834 BCE, Jesus. Bali of Orissa, 725 BCE. Indra or of Tibet, 725 BCE. Uh, Leo of Nepal, 622 BCE. Buddha of India, Buddha Sakya, 600 BCE. Mithra of Persia, 600 BCE. Uh, I can't pronounce all of these names, but it goes on. Salivahana of Bermuda, um, Zul of Egypt, Osiris of Egypt, Odin of the Scandinavians. Uh, these just supposedly ascended to the sky. And right down here is Baal. You know what happened when Israel began to worship Baal. Jehovah, the creator, was very patient with them, but he lost his patience, and he cast them out among the Gentiles, never to return again until the end of days. And when I mean Israel, I mean the kingdom of Israel, the lost ten tribes. Now, what do I, okay, I don't think I need this anymore. You can, um, uh, you can look it up as a mausoleum of Julie E. Christ. Um, I don't know if I can move this, no. Um, you can look it up for yourself. And... Please read Jeremiah 10. And then we need to read this. I want to first go to 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4. Is it 4? No, no, that's not four. It's, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Acts 11 and verse 26. When he had found him, he brought him to Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Is that what it says? Well, before I answer the question, I'm going to go to this. The word crematizo, or crematizo, yes. 5537 in Strong's Concordance, the Greek word means 
and definition to transact business or to make answer, but it's usage, the actual usage of the word originally, or a transact business, A, act of Elohim, or a warning. I am warned by Elohim, probably in response to an inquiry as to one's duty. I take a name from my public business, hence I receive a name and publicly called. Now, my parents came out of the Amish. Do the Amish, did they call, are they the ones who call themselves Amish? No, they didn't call themselves Amish. Outsiders did. Why? Because they were followers of uh, John Amish. The Mennonites. Were they orig Did they originally call themselves Mennonites? No. Who called them Mennonites? The other Protestants did. Because they were followers of Menno Simmons. So they were called Mennonites. The Anabaptists. Did they call themselves Anabaptists originally? No. The others, the Catholics and the other Protestants, called them Anabaptists, which means anti-baptism. But, once again, a warning, warned of Elohim, probably in response to an inquiry as to one's duty. What are you doing? Now, this word crematizo is used in this manner. Hold on, I have to, I, okay, that, that was in what? I might have, to, uh, I forgot where I got this from, so give me a second to, by faith, no. Okay, here we go. There we go. It would be in Hebrews 11 and verse 7. By faith, Noah, crematizo, being warned of Elohim. This is how they used it here. And that's correct of things not yet seen, being moved with fear, prepared an ark to saving the house, by which he condemned the world and became heirs of righteousness, which is by faith. So if King James used the correct definition of crematizo, and being warned of Elohim, then one would think that you also should use that same uh, definition here. Disciples then were warned of Elohim concerning Christians first in Antioch. You see how deceptive King James and other versions are. It's not just King James. You see what they've done here? You are going to be required to have a high level of intelligence quotient when you are reading the Bible. Otherwise, otherwise, you too shall be deceived. Now,
we talked about um, let's see here we looked at this Dionysus I don't need this so let's look at Dionysus let's have a look at him false idol Dionysus the god of grape harvest winemaking fertility orchards fruits and vegetation insanity and ritual madness that's much like what Jehovah described in Jeremiah 10 is it not who are his parents Zeus and Semele Zeus is Satan as you will find in Revelation 2 when the church in what is that um, oh it's one of the churches where Satan dwells and the church where Satan dwells, dwelled at, the, at that time, there was the altar of Zeus. Therefore, Zeus is Satan. So they turned their savior, their anointed one as they say they combined it they mixed it with Bacchus and Dionysus all right now let's continue I can go ahead and get rid of this now The mosaic is known as the Christ Helios and illustrates the syncretism of Christianity with the pagan sun worshipped institute instituted at the winter solstice by Emperor Marcus Aurelius at the end of the second century. Helios. Let's have a look, shall we? We'll look at it as the great Colossus of Rhodes. All right. Images. This is the Great Colossus of Rhodes. I believe this is probably the original figure right here. Right there. Looks a lot like something we, we know. Statue of Liberty, the new Colossus. Now watch this here. The new Colossus. The new Colossus. You see? You see that? And, of course, let's not forget, and this is a female, this is a woman, and as I pointed out that Ecclesia is also the new Colossus. But she is the great whore. Now, if I can find that picture. Of course, I won't be able to find it today. 
Why? I don't know why. Okay, let's do this Ecclesia and Synagogue. And that, of course, is a crown. I'll find it somehow. She has the same points on her crown as you see in this uh, the Statue of Liberty. I can't find it now. There it is, right here. That's it. All right? See that? This is actually now the great whore. As I proved to you in my previous video. Now let's look at... Is it Jesus with beams of light? I'll just, I'll try it like that to see if it's... Well, they, uh, okay. That's not the one that I was looking for. I'll just, maybe I'll just uh, see if I can pick one out. But they all look like Dionys uh, Dionysus, Apollyon, and all of that. Well, that's one that's similar. If you look hard enough, you'll find it. Okay? But I don't have time for that. But remember, when they make a graven image and put it in your Sunday services of this, of this image, it is a fraud, it is delusion, it is madness, and it will be destroyed on the day that Jehovah visits the Gentiles as we just read in Jeremiah 10. Okay? Now, So who was born on December the 25th, actually? Let me show you. Roman. Um, okay. There's a whole a bunch of uh, articles you can choose from. I'll just pick the first one. I guess. Late December, at that time of the year, winter solstice in the northern hemisphere, the shortest day and the longest night of the year, was a full was full of pagan European celebrations. The Roman Empire declared December the twenty fifth a holiday to celebrate the birth of their adopted Syrian idol Sol Invictus in two seventy four. What was the Syrian idol? Do you remember? Baal. The one that they sacrificed their children to. Some 50 years later, Roman Emperor Constantine officially adopted December 25th as the day of celebrating Christ's birth. Before 1000 BCE, we have the following gods or demigods born on December 25th. Horus, Osiris, and Attis. Before 200 BC, we have Mithra, Heracles, Dionysus, Tammuz, Adonis, and others. Um, so uh, remember, Dionysus and Apollyon are the same are the same idol, and all sun idols are the same. Baal.
So you now have a choice to make. I have proven to all of you that Christmas is a fraud, is delusion, is insanity, it is a custom, a doctrine that will be destroyed by Jehovah on the day that he visits the Gentiles. This idolatry is the idolatry that that Jezebel in Romans 2 caused people to commit fornication with. Yes, Jehovah's visitation upon the Gentiles is coming and he's going to destroy all of their doctrines, all of their idolatry as we saw in Jeremiah 10. So what we're going to do is go to that Jezebel. Let yeah, we'll see if we can find it. It's all in 1 Kings. All right, so I th we'll just go to Revelation um, 2. So it was the, the congregation in Pergamos was the one that had the altar of Zeus in it. All right. Now, the message to the congregation, to the ecclesia in Thyatira. These things says the son of Elohim, who has his eyes like the flame of fire and his feet are like fine brass. I know your works in charity and service and faith and your patience and your works to be last more than the first. However, otherwise, on the flip side, I have a few things against you because you have allowed that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. And I think this may go back to the doctrine of Sybil in Greece. To teach and to cause to wander my servants to commit fornication. This fornication is, he, he goes on to describe this fornication, eating things sacrificed to idols, which means you may not partake of your Christmas parties that your company throws, that your neighbors throw, with whether, whether it's a Christmas goose or Christmas ham, do not participate. Because if you do, let me show you what happens. I gave her space to repent of her fornication. Nearly 2,000 years of space. And she repented not did not. He's going to cast her into a beer and them who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, or as they say, the great tribulation. So, you have a choice to make. You can stop doing that in time, just in time, and be spared from the great tribulation upon the Gentiles. Or if you refuse, you continue to participate in these pagan doctrines of fornication. And this fornication, folks, do not be, listen to me carefully, this is eating things sacrificed to idols. This is participating in Christmas parties. 
or Easter parties. Any participation of that is that fornication he's speaking of. Unless he's going, to, if they do not repent of their deeds, they are going to be cast into great tribulation, and I will kill her children with a extremely painful death by pestilence. Now, what are you going to do about it? Are you ready to be separated from your friends and family? For the truth, we just read in Jeremiah 10 that Jehovah is the truth. All of these other names, they are false. As I have pointed out many, many times, the name of the Messiah is Yehoshua or Yehoshua. Hoshea means salvation. Yehovah must be in the name of the Messiah, the Moshiach. If the name of Yehovah is not in that name, it is a false name. That name must also have the word for salvation in it. The proper way to say it is Yehoshia. But it also, you can see that it's obviously written as Yehoshua in the scripture, and that's fine. But let me show you something. <coughs> Actually, let's just use this here so I don't lose my. All right, Hosea. Let's look up the meaning. Hosea is the pronunciation. Salvation is. The meaning, Yehoshia, is the name of the Moshiach now. Let's look at, oh, what, what did I do here? I should scroll back out and do this. Now, we go to This book, the book of Yehoshua, all right? It's not the book of Joshua, it's the book of Yehoshua. Now, after the death of Moshe, the servant of Yehovah, it came to pass that Yehovah spoke unto Yehoshua. It means the same thing. Yehovah, salvation. So either way to say it is correct. All right. Now there's no excuses. Now you're going to have to get some courage. Stop saying those names, those false names. Look, look I, I, I do not use the word God for Jehovah. I don't do it. Look, I'm still alive. I can still eat. I'm healthy. You can too. Unless, of course, you want to be loved by the world. Um, let's see. Rejected by Father, Son. Hold on. Let me see if I can remember that scripture. Uh, 
Let's see. Forsaken, that's the word. Not worthy of me. Let's let's look at it like that. I'll find it. Just please be patient with me. This one is a good one, but there's one that's a better one. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Okay? But there's a better one. Um, forsaken. Uh, uh, leap with joy. I, I think that's the one. Let me... Let me leap for joy. Maybe that's it. I think it's this one. Luke 6, 22. 20, yeah, 22. Bath, yeah, that's the one. I'm going to do this with Strong's Concordance because it's necessary to do so. And lifted up his eyes to his disciples and said, Blessed you be the poor, because yours is the kingdom of Elohim. Blessed are you those of you who are hungry now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. So, if you are profiting from this world, there is no blessing. Blessed are you when men shall hate you. And when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast your name out as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. Behold, your reward is great in... It, uh, that reward is coming down out of heaven, by the way, but the Christians don't believe that. For in like manner they did unto your fa their fathers, did their fathers unto the prophets. Now listen very carefully. Woe unto you who are rich today, because you have received your consolation. Woe unto you who are full, for you shall be hungry. Woe unto you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Do you want to be spoken well of by your family, neighbors, and stuff like that because you celebrate Christmas? Hmm? Because you go to church on Sunday? That's not a good reason to be spoken well of. For so did their fathers also did to the false prophets. Now, but that's still not the one that I was looking for. I'll probably find it later. Um, I thought it would be in the Leap for Joy one. Anyone who has been forsaken by a son forsaken by sons daughters it's a very good one for because and I can't find it I will find it on another day, and I will expound upon that particular one. Uh, maybe I'll use uh, Google. This is the one. 
Matthew 19, verse 29. Everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake shall receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. So if you have just one who forsake you because you believe the truth, you believe Yehoshua, not Jesus, just one of them forsakes you. You will receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. See, I want you to read that carefully. It is something that is personal for me. Because at least one member of my own family has forsaken me for this very reason. So it's very personal to me. There's a promise right there. Right there. For me. Can be for you too. But it does not, you don't have to have not everyone has forsaken me, but member, a member of my family has. Doesn't mean you have to suffer all of this. Just says if you're suffering any of that, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. Let's see if, um, all right. So, and we can look at it in uh, uh, Mark 10, verse 29. I will have to do Strong's Concordance. And you can see right here, this word Jesus is not Jesus, as I have shown you many times. What is it? Yehoshua! Verily I say unto you, there is no one that has left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother's sake or children or lands for my sake, and the Gospels, let's see what it says, continue. Mark 10, 29, Mark 10, 30. But that he shall receive a hundredfold in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come, eternal life. Right? They kind of each kind of translate it a little bit differently. I like the translation where it says, anyone who has suffered any of these losses shall receive a hundredfold and eternal life in the time to come. So to the member of the family who forsook me. I hope you will one day see this video and change your heart. To the rest of you, take a warning, take note. Don't put yourself through great tribulation because if you continue to keep these pagan days, this is exactly what is going to happen. It is guaranteed. 